Hello everyone, Daniel Kerr here. You are watching the Emerging Biology Network or you're watching my YouTube channel, which is associated with the Emerging Biology Network. One thing I want to talk about today, I talked about microdosing in the last video. I'm going to talk about it a little bit again. I have noticed that when I adhere to the Paul Stamets protocol, which is five days on and two days off, which is in contrast to doing the James Fadiman protocol, which is once every three days, that I tend to get headaches behind the eyes. Now, here's the interesting thing before I even get started is I want to let you know that even though I generally do the James Fadiman protocol, James Fadiman protocol for, for timing, right, the chronology of the microdose, I actually also adhere to the Stamets protocol because I take niacin and lion's mane with, with the microdose as well to give me, uh, to, to excite and initiate neurogenesis and plasticity, which I talked about in the last video. What I found was that these extras that go along with the Paul Stamets protocol, besides the uh, serotonin 2A receptor modulating substance, which in his case is, is psilocybin all the time, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that taking these, these extra couple days off, they really, really allow my, my brain and my body to initiate and put into, uh, to implement the changes that have taken place in my body because of the microdose, right? So whenever I do take the Paul Stamets protocol with the timing, which is to take five microdoses in a row, five days in a row, and then take two days off, I tend to get headaches. And these headaches last for three days, right? So for one thing, I know that 5-HT2A modulation, receptor modulation, the serotonin 2A receptor modulation has been associated with the relief and um, possibly cure of uh, of cluster headaches and migraines. In fact, Albert Hoffman was himself working on a headache remedy when he discovered LSD in 1938. Now, there are some modulators like the triptans, sumatriptan and uh, what's the other, Erg er ergotamine, right? And these are effective for relief of headaches. So, uh, it was kind of surprising that this would give me a headache, okay? Now, it should be, should be noted that these triptans and um, that they don't have the long-lasting relief of cluster headaches and migraines that are associated with microdosing, though, I will say, okay? Also, LSD and psilocybin were both um, used to treat headaches for a while, but because of the psychedelic effects, they were discontinued in use, right, in medicine, largely, those people, though, had never experimented with microdosing. They, they didn't know anything about it. So that could change the face of headache medicine in the future. And I already see that there are some startups and companies, specifically in Europe and in, in the Scandinavian countries, that are experimenting with headache medicines uh, that are centered around the microdosing of LSD. Okay, Also with AD, ADHD, I posted that on the microdosing.tech uh, Facebook page the other day. Okay? which is microdosing, uh, facebook.com slash microdosing.tech, dot tech. Okay. Now, when I did go through and investigate these headaches, I did find out that there was a lot of clinical evidence for headaches associated with the use of psychedelic tryptamines. I, I noticed that uh, many of the top researchers, including James Fadiman himself, actually did um, log and and verify that many of his uh, subjects, many of his patients uh, involved in, in, in their studies did complain of headaches in the long run, right? Now, here's another thing that I've noticed is that, see, I do um, at my company, microdosing.tech, you can go there, dot t t e c h. that's microdosing.tech, like that's the URL, and you can go there and you can see that I do offer a legal microdosing product, okay? It does contain tryptamines, it does have niacin and lion's mane, and it has yohimbe to give you a nice flush and to prevent, um, you know, any type of legal ramifications uh, surrounding abuse and whatnot. The thing is that it still is tryptamine modulation of the serotonin 2A receptors, even though it doesn't cause a, a, a buzz or a head change, right? The issue with this is that 
it probably, if taken every day, could still, with those who are sensitive, as I am, to this type of, of serotonin 2A modulation, it could possibly cause the same headaches that I'm talking about, okay? Now, I've noticed, here's the interesting thing, these psychedelic tryptamines, they are partial agonists of the 5-HT2A receptor. They're not full agonists, okay? Agmatine, which is a byproduct of arginine, it's a metabolite of arginine, is a full agonist of the serotonin 2A receptor, okay? It does all kinds and kinds of things, okay? It, it is... It, it, um, direct, directly blocks the formation of AGEs, okay, which is advanced glycation end products. It's just associating with, uh, associated with aging. Agmatine plays an important role in polyamine metabolism, okay? It's a precursor for polyamine synthesis. Uh, so, so it, it helps all kinds of mental functions in this regard. It is both a inhibitor and an activator of nitric oxide synthesis, okay? This is kind of in the last video I talked about how microdosing has, exhibits some what we would call adaptogenic properties, meaning that it brings things into balance. It will decrease production of certain things or increase production of certain things to bring you to a baseline or, or to bring you into a healthy state. It's, it's basically... Uh, performs two opposite functions depending on your condition and set and setting, right? If, if, regarding nitric oxide, agmatine does the same thing. It inhibits or activates nitric oxide synthase. And uh, it's very, very interesting how, how that works, okay? Agmatine is a membrane supporter, right? A cellular membrane supporter. It, 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 it increases the, your brain's ability to create synapse, right? Synaptic response. Um, <laughs> it, uh, it, it increases ATP production, right? In your cells. That, that has to do with the membrane um, support, I'm sure. Okay. Agmatine is a full agonist of the 5-HT2A receptor, which is why I'm even talking about it. That's what I was saying. Here's the thing. When I take agmatine every day, 500 milligrams of agmatine, I never experience headaches. So my suggestion, no, I'm not going to say my suggestion. I'm going to say what I do is I take a microdose every three days and on the off days, I still take the lion's mane. I don't take the niacin or the yohimbi for a flush, but I definitely take the agmatine to continue the modulation of the 5-HT2A receptor without headaches.